to. So, um, yeah, why don't you go ahead with that? Yep, sure thing. Uh, so on the Hackfest front uh, and hackathons, uh, a couple things. <clears throat> uh, first, in uh, Shanghai, March 11th and 12th, there will be a hackathon. Uh, I'll send everyone the link for that uh, in the meeting minutes. But this will be similar to the hackathon that we had uh, with ABN AMRO, IBM Netherlands, and Holland Fintech in Amsterdam back in October. Um, so uh, more details coming on that. Uh, on the Hackfest front, like we just had in San Francisco, uh, there was some talk around doing a Hackfest in Shanghai um, in tandem with the Hackathon. Um, Want to hear from the folks on this call if that's something they would be able to attend or not. Um, have heard some concerns just uh, from the fabric side of things uh, with everyone jamming on that front, uh, as well as the short runway to doing something in March. Um, and wondering if it may make sense to push that a couple months later in the year and peg to a different event in China, uh, and in the meantime, uh, do something uh, more likely in New York uh, instead. Any, any thoughts from the group? Uh, is this something that folks would be able to attend if we went forward with it in Shanghai, or is it better to push that to a, a slightly later date? So this is Arno speaking for myself, obviously. Um, I think I could attend in March. Uh, I, I acknowledge the fact that the Fabric team is uh, focusing on trying to get 1-0 out. It's not clear at this point, you know, where we'll be then. <laughs> Officially, the goal is to try and be pretty much done, but we know how that goes. Uh -huh. And so it might be wise indeed to push it for a bit further down into the year. The thing though is, and I think several of us have said that before, is the sooner we set the date, the better, you know, the more likely we'll be able to make it. Not knowing is the worst. Yep. I uh, completely agree. Um, noted on that. Uh, we've been we've been trying to find space and, and struggling a bit there, but yeah, I, I, I hear your point. Others uh, from the TSC or just the broader technical community? Uh, hi, Richard here. I probably won't be able to be in Shanghai in March, so I won't be there. All right. Mick or Hart? Um, I probably won't. Um, I can't speak for Dan, though. I don't okay. Know. Uh, he might be able to send someone. And Hart, are you uh, similar to that, or what? What's your perspective? Yeah, I think I have to be uh, in California on the ninth. I'm not sure though. Um, okay. It, it's still up in the air. Okay. Yeah, we heard uh, similar from Chris Ferris that it would be um, quite a bit of a challenge as well. Um, I, uh, my guess, and and Brian chime in as well is. Uh, given with about uh, four or five weeks to go and getting visas and whatnot, it, it would be a bit of a challenge. And also hearing uh, a lot of hesitation from the people that have spoken, um, it may make sense to peg this to an, an event uh, a couple months later in the year. Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, yeah, the hackathon planning went slower than we were hoping, and, and we're hoping to piggyback this on that. So that was a reason why for the uncertainty and um, you know, apologies for that. Should, do we have the idea of keeping this kind of every two month kind of uh, pace? So then start planning now for a, an event elsewhere. Um, uh, you know, keeping the, the pace would mean end of March, beginning of April. Um, and should that, we should have it here I think, should that be New York or should we aim for Europe? We were thinking of Europe in May, um, anyways, uh, and and have some thoughts, uh, some some research going on now about London and uh, I think uh, uh, Intellect EU, one of our friends there, suggests uh, um, uh, a spot in Lisbon. Uh, but we we know we need to get planning on these you know, further ahead than just you know the very next one. Um, but uh, but for at least now, do people want to stay to a much beginning? Um,
anyone? Okay, uh, maybe we'll do, have this conversation over email then. All right, sounds good. Um, all right, the next item, uh, Rocket Chat is now live. For those of you that were at the uh, Hackfest last week, uh, you've likely logged in and poked around there. Um, please do, let me just drop the, the link in there into the chat window. Uh, head over there, uh, the UI looks very similar to Slack, which is great. Uh, you can use your existing Linux Foundation ID to log in, um, but we are, are moving everything over there. I believe Rai has finished archiving everything from uh, Slack. Um, so yeah, any, any questions on the Rocket Chat front or any feedback to this point from anyone that's used it? So this is on again. I mean, I you know, for those of us who've tried it, we were quite amazed how similar it is to Slack. There are a few glitches here and there, and some things don't you know are not exactly the same, but it's extremely similar. And quite frankly, I'm pretty happy with the change so far. Great, good to hear. Uh, has anyone encountered any trouble, or uh, so far so good? All right, well, hearing no complaints, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, definitely let us know uh, as you get moving in there. That's um, great. That's one of the biggest issues with uh, um, you know, for developer tools for the community was just the uh, unarchivability of Slack. Um, so I'm really happy that we've moved over. I'm really um, happy that Rai was able to capture the art. So can I ask a clarification question on the archives? When you say, Rai, you were able to archive of Slack. Is it everything that has always been posted since the beginning of time there? Rai, are you on the I call? don't know, uh, uh, Arno, Arno, I don't think Rai's on. Uh, we'll, we'll connect with him and just get an answer to that one. Really? Okay. I mean, she, I think, she's on the... I, I mean, he... He's on the chat, so I was expected him to be on. He's on the go to uh, meeting chat. Right, right. I did see him pop up at the beginning. So I, uh, but okay. Maybe the rain washed him away. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe indeed. So, um, my understanding, I'd have to go and look at, because he posted links to where he stored them up on GitHub, um, was that by by basically shutting down um, by shutting down uh, Slack, we were able to get access to, ironically enough, <laughs> access to old messages. Um, uh, I I don't know though if that goes back beyond the 10,000 or not. We'll have to come back to you. I think the intent was to go back and get the ones older than 10,000 messages. Ironically enough, we can do that if we reduce the number of user accounts on Slack to under some threshold amount, <laughs> then those suddenly become available again. Um, I, uh, I think um, I have to go back and check with them. But uh, but uh, are people comfortable with the idea that the old messages come back and become searchable as archives? Yeah, I, it's funny you say that because I thought about it. I was like, well, if some people assumed that it was okay to say anything because it was going to disappear, <laughs> they may be surprised. <laughs> I'd like to introduce these people to the immutable blockchain. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but there's a difference when you expect it or not. Uh, of course, of course. But so, I, I, yeah, I understand the, the what you described. Uh, Rai explained that to me as well. I just didn't know if it had happened already or what. And when you say, so is Slack actually down now? I didn't think so. Uh, I see. I, I see that these archives things. I see that the icons next to you. I'm looking at the Slack hackledgerproject.slack.com window right now, and all the groups except for general appear to um, have uh, Rye posting archived and oh yes, will be searchable in the archives. So um, and I and it looks like I can't actually add new messages, uh, but the general channel appears to be open, and I don't know if that's not possible to close. Uh, uh, let's put a little hello into there. Um, so, uh, I, I, but the intent okay. will be to close this down. 
Okay, but I do see what you're describing now. It's uh, every the channel seems to be archived and so in a special mode, and so that's good. Yeah. And, you know, it may be like GitHub where <laughs> we can't turn off, you know, the 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 issue tracker, so people keep lodging issues over there. Um, uh, uh, boy, um, we'll, we'll try to get this uh, cleaned up, and then. And, and, but let me go back to this question for the others. If we can get to older archive messages, do we want them to be stored in a directable and into a useful thread, a history of the project to the degree that conversations about development happened, or even bootstrap questions, that sort of thing? Um, but anyway, people sort of complained when their messages disappeared. I don't know if people wanted that behavior, or it's not like this is a Snapchat, but it, it is a different. It, it re, there's a reasonable collaboration to have around it. But maybe we'll have this conversation. Uh, I'm all for the archival, and just so you know. All right. I think we suffer more from the lack of access to the archive than the other way around, for sure. So, and this is not because I haven't said anything stupid before on the channels <laughs> <laughs> that I might regret. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm willing to live with that. Got it. Understood. All right. Um, so moving into the workgroup charters, uh, I know we won't be able to take a, a vote today on the identity workgroup charter, just in that we only have four of the 11 TSC members. Um, quick update on the other two. So Fabric SDK, Parta is going to be sending that uh, soon in the coming days uh, to the TSC list. So we'll review that at the next meeting. Uh, Oleg, I'm not sure if you're on. Any update on requirements working group? Um, all right, we can we can connect with Oleg offline. Uh, Vipin, do you want to just do a quick update uh, from discussions from the Hackfest or over the last uh, week and a half or so? Um, and then we'll likely need to do an update to the TSC list uh, and an email vote if people are ready at that point. Yeah, sure. Um, essentially, um, the changes that were proposed in the last uh, meeting uh, the TSC meeting, which was before the Hackfest, have been put in place. Um, primarily, uh, a directive to get an implementation uh, pathway into the document, uh, which, of course, is this. Is, I have made this uh, remark before. We are the only one, uh, the working group, uh, to have. Well, of course, the working groups which are connected with uh, specific uh, uh, things like uh, Explorer and all have uh, implementations, but we are the only ones who are uh, sort of a generic uh, identity or architecture, you know, requirements, that sort of uh, group to have this requirement. And um, I have already, uh, so I haven't made any changes to this document since the Hackfest. And I had already uh, put it out that this uh, charter was changed with uh, all the suggestions made before. Uh, since uh, this is not going to go up for vote today, I urge that people um, either uh, we, we set up an email vote or um, we uh, set up you know, basically uh, any kind of comments should be made to the document with enough time to um, respond. The other uh, other point is I, we don't want this thing to drag on forever, you know, because uh, that creates a certain uncertainty in the uh, in the whole working group uh, uh, moving forward. And I had also posted up a. a sort of a minutes of what happened in the call yesterday. 
So uh, people should try to take a look at the uh, primary document and make changes if they need to. Uh, meaning the meeting nodes and other things which have nothing to do with the charter. So that that's all for now from me. All right, sounds good. Oh, Brian, I, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. I want to say I think I think it looks great. I think this is the right degree. Of detail. Um, uh, there's a lot of conversation at the access about potentially uh, a new project in the space. Um, uh, specifically focused on identity, and I'd love to see the local group um, be involved in helping make that a, a compelling uh, proposal and, and a compelling project. Uh, uh, I, think, I think this is a, an important thing to kind of weave our project together. So I kind of want to uh, uh, silence equal consent. I, I think uh, this is. This I can is hear you, Brian. Um, oh. We can move forward. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, what did I cut out again? Uh, not cut out, but uh, maybe uh, just got really quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm my apologies. Um, just saying, I think this looks great. I think we, I think uh, we should move forward. We can formally approve it, but I don't think you should take uh, lack of feedback as opposition to this because I think uh, this is a, a vital thing, and we had conversations about the, uh, uh, that new project, Sovereign, um, which the proposal is being worked on on the wiki right now. If anyone wants to uh, um, start to take a look at it, I don't think it's officially ready for submission yet, but uh, there, um, the folks from, from Sovereign are starting to work on it. Um, uh, but uh, And I see the relationship between that project and this group as being very complementary. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, um, thank you for doing this. This is the right degree of granularity. Great. All right. Um, moving on from there, uh, the final two items are just quick heads up. Uh, the global sync log uh, that we've been talking about the last few weeks. Um, I know that uh, Morali and uh, I think Parda and Tomas and, and a few others have connected up. Uh, they are chatting on this right now. And the intent is that uh, Tomas is going to uh, give an update on that on the TSC call on February 23rd. Um, and I think uh, part of our Morali will be sending some notes on that uh, in advance as well. And the final item is the internship program, which we talked about at the Hackfest. Um, we are looking to get the potential mentors uh, and project suggestions finalized by the end of next week, February 17th. So if you or your company is interested in mentoring a summer intern, uh, please fill out the, the form ASAP. Let me just drop the link into the chat window. Uh, and then from there, uh, we will open this up to interns to apply for the program. Any questions there? Are the interns situated like at a central place or are they at like at Red Hat and Westford would would one be on site here if we were eligible to get an intern or would they go like are they remote and we're managing them remotely um, most likely remote uh, that said if it worked out and there were local interns and um, that made sense that's certainly an option um, but I think we want to cast the net pretty wide and um, yeah, allow, allow for that. So, so either way, really. Okay. Just curious. Any other questions? All right. Um, re relatively short agenda for today. Um, we're happy to give everyone a half an hour back, but certainly if there's other topics, um, please chime in now. Just so to just raise... to... Sorry. Good. No, I had a quick clarification question of the identity working group charter status. Then do we try to follow up in email to get it formally approved or what, do we postpone that to next week? What's the plan? I didn't get the... We, we can kick off an email vote today. Uh, it didn't sound like there were any 
any objections from those on the call? Uh, and a few people chimed in in the chat window saying it looks good, uh, as well as Brian's yes. feedback. Um, so if there's no objections from those on this call, uh, we can kick off an email vote today uh, to close on that. Sounds good to me. Thanks. Um, I would like to throw this out um, as a uh, question because it came up um, during yesterday's uh, call whether interoperability of all sorts would be a stated requirement uh, of the identity working group or not. So I know that there is no quorum today, but this is a just a basic uh, question that needs to be answered before we go um, uh, slaying dragons all over the place. We don't we don't want to get into any uh, uh, sort of uh, a blind uh, you know alley with no egress. Uh, basically, we want to. We, are, we want to create a pathway towards implementation, something concrete, which is which is the real aim of uh, you know this whole exercise. Because I think uh, identity being a foundational concept is a very uh, crucial thing to solve. I've gotten something from Bin about the uh, layout of the interface and other things. Um, so I would like to ask the others like Iroha and uh, STL and possibly the Corda people to send me any thoughts they may have on identity uh, also DAH so there are two things here one is you know this whole question of whether interoperability is a requirement second is a call to all the uh, all the projects currently under hibernation uh, under uh, under incubation and uh, potentially going to be under incubation to send some material about uh, an identity interface it doesn't matter whether it's a document or a, or a code we'll try to tease out something from that so that that's it from me We can uh, Ram here. Um, so, uh, you know, from the arch architecture work group uh, perspective, we have assumed that interoperability will be a requirement, and in fact, I think it made it into our charter document as one of the things uh, that we are uh, going to be addressing. Uh, so, I would, uh, so you know, if, if the overall architecture kind of assumes that we would have to tackle interoperability, I think might. Uh, input was that you know uh, that should be a requirement for the identity pieces as well. Yeah, hi, Bipin. It's, it's Richard here speaking from a coder perspective. So yeah, I think this is important. Two comments. One, our our technical white paper outlines how we're viewing identity in the core platform, um, and it's it's not we did we did look at um, the membership services core, but it wasn't quite what we needed. But it is quite similar in some ways. So the you know, so the, the, the PKIX PKIX approach we're taking in the core platform is in the tech white paper, so that could be a useful input document for the work. Um, there's also some work we're doing. Um, in our working groups um, in, in, inside R3, but not, not not fully advanced yet on um, on I guess you know, identity higher up the stack. So not 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 just mapping you know, names to IP addresses and keys, but the whole you know, the whole um, you know, self-sovereign stuff and you know, attestations and so forth, um, which we probably need to find a way to, to feed into that discussion as well. So maybe uh, maybe we need to talk about that offline. But they're the two main things that are relevant to Corda, I guess. Thanks, Richard. Anyone else want to chime in on this, or? Um, I have a point. Yeah, I'm here. Um, so um, I guess I was talking to the muted phone a little earlier. I was, uh, from the You're architecture part, group. I, we heard you, but I don't know whether okay. anybody else heard you. I heard you. <laughs> That's 
Any other comments or questions on Vipin's topic or uh, any other topics in general to cover? Uh, so we have one other kind of comment. I think uh, I saw something from the uh, early draft from the market uh, marketing uh, work group, and it mentioned mutability. So I was wondering whether uh, that came up in any other discussion, uh, because uh, at least in the discussions I've been part of, uh, we kind of assumed that uh, uh, it will be part of the uh, uh, that you know, immutability is an essential, uh, uh, you know, uh, characteristic of the distributed ledger that we are developing here in Hyperledger. In Hyperledger, so I just uh, wanted to get uh, folks' uh, folks' input on that. And I would propose, this is Leonard here. Uh, I would propose if um, identity is going to become a project, so we can have we can develop something for implementation then the charter and its scope be uh, solidified to include at least some of the high-level requirements we know already will be included, like uh, op uh, <coughs> the operability one, interoperability one, and any others at a very high level we know are uh, key for a working solution. So, because now it becomes a project, so this is more of a project charter for identity going forward. That's all I want to say. Uh so I do not want to reopen the charter discussion at this point, unless you want to uh, make changes in the charter that satisfies this, these conditions, because I don't think we should uh, put in anything about the requirements. It already just says two things. We are going to develop a document that de details the interfaces, which will include uh, uh, something um, about interoperability. And the other thing, it's all very generic. It says there will be an implementation. So there is no there is no requirements in there. And uh, I personally do not agree that we should have that requirements in the charter. Because right now you're reopening the charter discussion, right? I okay, mean, um, we, I are, agree. we have probably agreed already to get it put to a email vote if you want to reopen that charter discussion. Um, I, I agree, Vipin. I certainly agree from what you just said. We agree we put us to a vote. However, the document you mentioned, which is going to be um, an artifact related to this charter, will it be a specification document for that implementation of identity? Because that's where we'll need to capture yeah. all of these uh, details. It needs to be somewhere in one document. Okay, um, I'm happy with that. Great. Uh, any other topics? All right. Hearing none, I think uh, we'll give everyone a half an hour back today. Uh, and enjoy Thursday. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye. Bye.